Good morning. Thank you to the band for that. Reminder that tomorrow night here at the hall there is the PCC at 7 o'clock, followed by a core council at 7.30. Uh, that's here at the hall tomorrow evening. 9th of September, there is a first aid course being put, put on here at the hall. Uh, it's mainly for section leaders or for people that need to have it. Uh, so in the next couple of weeks, there should be invites going out. Uh, but that's the 9th of September, there'll be the first aid course for section leaders and those that need to, to have that. 24th September, the flag day down the high street. We've uh, been given extra permits for collecting by the... Uh, by the Stockton Borough Council, so we could do with a couple of extra collectors, if you can see, Ian, uh, Saturday the 9th of September. The band's coming out to support us, so it should be uh, a good day, an opportunity to uh, collect funds that are needed for the Corp, uh, and, but also just to, to show our presence in Stockton. Uh, we've also had one more date confirmed, which is the 8th of October, uh, for collecting as the Port Act. These extra dates of collecting on a Saturday are being arranged in lieu of the big collection going out on an evening uh, whenever it was done, September or February, whenever it was the last time. So we're looking at trying to do this a few times throughout the year instead of giving up our hours for a couple of weeks. So if you're able to, to offer a couple of hours on the 8th of October, if you see Ian after the meeting, that'll be for ASDA Portrack. There are plenty more announcements uh, up on the overhead after the meeting and on the screens, or if you want any more details, you can come and see me after the meeting. Uh, finally, the flowers, which are for Maureen Gunkel's belated birthday, so we hope you enjoy those, and we hope you had a good birthday as well. So thank you, and enjoy your worship. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is lovely to see you. It is lovely also to hear the chatter amongst all of you this morning before the start of the meeting. Have you said God bless to the person sitting next to you? So before we start, just turn around and say, good morning, God bless you, to the person sitting next to you. God bless you this morning. And now we've blessed each other. We're going to stand up and sing, stand up and bless the Lord, ye people of his choice. It's uh, 391 if you're using your Salvation Army songbook. There's five verses, band, sorry. <laughs> Let's stand together and have a good sing. <laughs>
Dave Evans is a writer of both words and music and he was in his early 20s when he wrote a hymn that is so popular it features in the top 10 of favourite hymns every year. That hymn is Be Still in the Presence of the Lord and it was published in 1986. Its words are profound and simple yet they are filled with biblical references from the beginning to the end, from the Old Testament to Revelation. It starts with the story of Jacob's ladder. When Jacob fell asleep and dreamt of a ladder between earth and heaven, Jacob wakes and realises he has been in a special place. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? And then we move to the story of the burning bush that we'll be looking at later on. When, Moses, when the Lord called Moses and told him to take off his shoes, for the place you are standing is holy ground. Our God is holy, isn't he? And so very worthy of our praise. Within its verses, we also hear parts of the story of Elijah in the first book of Kings. God did not speak to Elijah in the wind or the earthquake or the fire, but in the stillness. The hymn speaks about the awesomeness of God, but it also talks to us about making space for God in our time. The line, with splendour he is crowned, alludes to John's vision in Revelation, where people are overwhelmed with God's splendour and sing, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Holy fire and splendour may be the things that we associate with the God of Moses and Revelation, but do we associate them when we come to church on a Sunday? We should do, shouldn't we? Because the Jesus we read about in the Bible is our radiant King of Light. The song is about the God mentioned in these stories being with us here and now, as real today as he was then. That third verse says, Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him. No work in faith received from him. Be still in the power of the Lord is moving in this place. So we're going to sing this song quietly together before we join together with a call to worship. Be still.
So we join together with a prayer that's going to come on the screen. This place, to all together, this place for us is holy ground. The place where we sing songs of praise to the Lord and repeat the stories of faith that inspire us to respond to Christ's love. God called us here in whispering winds and in burning flames and with his presence breaks down the barriers we have placed around him. Instead, God meets us in our vulnerability, our humanity. Let us worship the Lord. And so we said last week, the story that we're going to be looking at today is from Exodus 3. And before we pray, I invite you to just listen to a beautiful song. Take your feet, take your shoes off if you want to. You're standing or sitting on holy ground and just enter into this sacred space as we listen to this beautiful song, Holy Ground. Technology sometimes eludes us, but it doesn't disturb us from concentrating on God. And so, we'll pray. When we've listened to this beautiful, beautiful song.
let's pray together, shall we? Holy God, we thank you for the gift of this new day, for the glorious weather and the warm sunshine, and for the freedom that we have to come and worship your precious holy name in this place. Lord, we come before you with hearts of gratitude. You have seen us through another week, and we stand on the brink of a new week full of new beginnings and opportunities to be your representatives in this world. And our prayer this morning, Lord, is help us to start this week in the stillness, surrounded by your presence. Lord, as we step away from the busyness of life and quieten our hearts and minds before you, we pray that we may feel your holy presence in a very real way this morning. In this moment, we come to you and we lay our lives before you. We honour, worship and adore you with every fibre of our being. Father, we proclaim that you are the Holy One, and we invite your beautiful Holy Spirit into this meeting, into our lives, and we ask that you would please move freely among us. Come and dwell in our hearts. Equip us, challenge us, comfort and teach us. And as we rest in your stillness not just now, may we see your beauty, may we feel your power, and may we encounter your grace. Amen. And we look forward now to hearing the message from the band. Thank you, that was beautiful. We were really blessed yesterday. We, uh, we went up to Collingwood College to the Summer School Festival. And there were quite a few of you there, weren't there? It was a true blessing, wasn't it? I sat in my deck chair, kicked off my shoes, and we were indeed on holy ground. And we were really blessed 
by the beautiful singing and the playing of the band. And we pray that our young folk had a wonderful, wonderful time that last week. Monday and Tuesday were really busy here. We gave out 57 food parcels in two days. 57. We are already seeing the demands of this community are increasing. And I think as we venture further into the summer holidays, we are going to see that need increase even more. And so there is a gold box just as you come in by the doors, which is a donation box for food. And we just would ask for your help to help us provide as we assess what is really needed in this local community. So if you feel that you'd like to spend just, I don't know, an extra 50p a week on a tin of beans or a tin of rice pudding or a pack of biscuits or some cereals or long life milk, then just come along and pop it in, your go in the gold box when you come into worship and we will distribute that food and make sure it goes to people who really, really need it. So we've introduced you to the theme and we've listened to the song Standing on Holy Ground. Now we're going to watch the story of Exodus 3. to him out of the midst of the fire. Moses. 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 I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm right here. Take off your shoes, for you are standing on holy ground. Taking off my shoes. Uh, sir? I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cries, for I know their sorrows. Therefore, I will send you, Moses, to free them and you will bring my people to serve me upon this mountain. Who am I, Lord, to do this? If I go back to Egypt and say I'm sent by God, nobody will believe me. They'll, they'll ask me, what God? What's this God's name? What will I tell them? I am that I am. You will say, I am has sent me to you. This is my name forever and they will believe you. Now go. I will be with you. So last week, we asked you to prepare 
for this week's meeting by reading Exodus 3 and the first 15 verses. And I put a posting on Facebook in the middle of the week, which said, get your Bibles out, go and find somewhere quiet, take off your shoes if you want, and read that Bible reading, and then come back and be prepared to say how God spoke to you as you read those words. Now, 250 people saw that posting, and nine people liked it, and seven people are here. So that means a few of you may well have done what we asked. So I wonder how many of you have read that passage of scripture and would just like to say one thing. How did God speak to you as you read those words? Go on, Judith. Absolutely. Anybody else? Go on, Gemma. Sorry, I have to sit down and do this. That's fine. Um, so what struck me was God had recognised the plight of his people um, and had responded to calls for help, but he gave Moses a task list, which just reminded me that God has, a, you know, the most important role in everything that we need to do, but we also have a responsibility to listen and respond. Absolutely. Anybody else? Well, I did, but then something else has happened since that. I have that reading, and I did have an understanding, a better understanding of what God was trying to do to me personally. Um, but something else has happened since then, which was yesterday. I'd rather tell you about what happened yesterday. It's fine. So we went to the beach yesterday and all of our family were there, there was about 20 of us there, one or two friends. And the children got to tea time and they were singing choruses and they had um, quite a rendition of many different choruses. And then we, um, as we were eating our fish and chips, one of the children, I don't know which child, one of the children said, let's sing. Now, we have quite an audience at this point. Yeah. We can draw attention. We're not quite family. And, uh, and one of the children says, let's sing. Our God is a great big God. <laughs> and you could hear it down the promenade. Our oh, children wonderful. Sing, our God is a And do you know what? I was humbled because my first impression was, oh, dear. And then my second thought was, oh, no, this is who you are. This is who you are. And these children freely, and they never missed the beat. Yeah. They never missed the beat. Went from causes to twinkle, twinkle, little star. You are my sunshine. Our God is a great big God. And I was, I was humbled by the children. Bless you. Do you know, it's here. We're next going to sing, Our God is a great big God. It's amazing, isn't it? I, I love this passage of scripture. It's, uh, to me, it's visual, it's dramatic. I wonder if you read it, if it was dramatic as the, the film clip from the Prince of Egypt. The thing that com kept coming through to me this week when I read it was, Moses took off his sandals, he took off something man-made and stood on something God made. And when he did that, he was, he was vulnerable because his shoes protect him from the, from the elements and from the ground. And when he stood in his vulnerabilities, uh, in his weakness without his shoes on, God spoke and God gave him a task. And that, that really humbled me because sometimes we have to stop, and that's my sermon, sometimes we have to stop and bring ourselves in a stillness before God speaks to us. And that reminded me to actually stop and listen to what God wants to say to me this week. Our God is a great big God. So did you sing that really loud yesterday, Oscar? Did you sing it? Yeah? Well, we're going to stand and we're going to sing it really loud now. Actions and all, higher than the skyscraper and deeper than the submarine. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Me. 
I love those words. You do it different up here. You dance, don't you? You've got to learn to dance. Okay. <laughs> but you know, they're amazing words and they're simple words and they're words that we should take into us. Every day we get up, we have the knowledge and the assurity that God holds us in his hands and there's nowhere we can go and there's nothing we can do that will change that. So, singing company, have you warmed your vocal cords now? Yeah? You're ready to sing to us because we are really looking forward to listening to your song this morning. Thank you. That was lovely. And again, that theme carries on, isn't it? He is there. Remember, children, when, whatever you're doing this week, God is there to love you and to care for you and to protect you. We're going to take up the offering now. Thank you. And then, um...
So we turn to scripture now, and uh, I, I feel as though I've been set up a bit. We've watched the animated version, haven't we? I feel a bit like I've got to go, Moses, Moses. <laughs> but, but we'll see how we go. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generation to generation. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to sing a beautiful song now. Um, um, in the secret of thy presence, where the pure in heart may dwell.
Shall we pray? Father God, we just come before you this morning, and as we open your word, we just pray that you will open our eyes, that we may see you clearly this day, that you will open our ears, that we may hear your small voice, and you will open our hearts, that we will receive from you, and uh, perhaps change the way we live because of the words that we've heard this morning. Amen. Um, the Lord rose up a, a holiness movement in the Salvation Army, didn't he? And uh, we believe that our call is to serve the present age, but it is possible to live a holy life in this present age. And it is our job to do that, to be the holiness of God, to set ourselves apart so when we minister to the people, because that's what we do in the week, we minister, each one of us has got that gift, that we will make an impact and bring that person a little closer to God. One of the accepted truths of our faith is that God is everywhere. We've sang our God is a great big God. But every now and then the Bible tells us about a particular breaking in of the divine presence into someone's life in an extraordinary manner. And one of the best known and most important of these stories to me is the encounter between God and Moses on Mount Sinai. The background to this event starts with the migration of Hebrews to Egypt during and after the time of Joseph, where they increased in number and flourished. A new Egyptian pharaoh came to power and he was threatened by the presence of the Hebrews and subjected them to slavery. This was the world that Moses was born into, approximately about 1,542 years before Christ. A world where his people were oppressed and his own life was in danger. This paranoid pharaoh ordered the Hebrew midwives to kill all the Hebrew baby boys. But in an act of uh, revolutionary daring, they, they disobeyed him. And we all know the story, don't we, of how baby Moses was hidden in the bulrushes along the Nile River and was discovered and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, who treated him like an Egyptian prince. So Moses escapes this awful situation of his people, but not for long. Because one day he saw an Egyptian overseer beating a Hebrew slave. Moses rushed to defend the slave, and in the fight that occurred, Moses killed the man. Not a very promising start, is it? Moses wanted for murder, ran away from his home and his people, and ended up in Midian, where he settled down with a wife, Zephora, uh, and then he tended the goats of his father-in-law, who was Jethro. And this brings us up to where our story picks up. As already mentioned by Judith, it was just an ordinary working day for Moses, keeping an eye on the flock as they searched for food on the side of a mountain. And then suddenly, the mundane day is transformed by an extraordinary sight, a flaming bush that seems to burn but is not consumed. And there was a divine messenger in the fire. The angel never speaks, but the voice of God directly speaks to Moses, calling him by his name, Moses. Moses knows that he is in the presence of someone or something much greater than he. And so he says, here am I. And God warns him to come no closer, but to take off your shoes for you are standing on holy ground. The ground is holy because God is present there and God is holy. The Latin word sanctus means holy and that's where we get our word sanctuary. A sanctuary means a container for holy things. This room is a sanctuary. This room is holy ground because it has been set apart and we know the presence of God is here. We've sung about standing on holy ground, but I wonder, have we experienced it? Have each one of you experienced standing on holy ground in the presence of the Lord? Just sit and quietly think about a time when you have experienced the presence of God in such a strong way that you were in no doubt that you were standing in God's presence. 
<clears throat> I wonder, I'm not going to ask you to share. I just want you to think about it and ponder on it. I wonder, how did you respond? What did you say? Did you respond positively? Because you know when you stand on holy ground, it's important that you respond to God appropriately with reverence and respect. Exodus means exit or departure. And Exodus 3 represents the first steps in God's great work of deliverance for his enslaved people in Egypt. It's, always, it's also a story of God's timing. God selected the time and the place where he would manifest himself to Moses. The reason is known only to God and is a simple expression of divine sovereignty. God chooses when and where he will make himself known to man. We cannot make a place holy ground on our own. Only God can do that. Exodus 3 is also how God called Moses into ministry at the tender age of 80. I'm not going to ask who's getting near that age. But you never know. Moses spent 40 years thinking he was somebody. 40 years learning he was a nobody. And 40 years discovering what God can do with a nobody. God had been preparing Moses since birth, but Moses hadn't really recognised this in his life. After the encounter at the burning bush, Moses became the greatest leader in the Old Testament, leading the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery to the border of the Promised Land. Moses received from God the laws that would govern until Jesus came. Through Moses, God made his covenant with Israel, and his precious and powerful ministry began when he stood barefooted before his Lord. Moses was at Horeb, which is the other name for Mount Sinai, when the Lord appeared to him in a burning bush. And it wasn't unusual in those days to see a dry bush ignite into flame in a dry desert place, but usually the fire would flare up and then rapidly burn out. This one didn't. It caught Moses' attention, and he no doubt thought how strange it looked. Fast forward to 2022. If someone sees something out of the ordinary these days, what do you do? I'll show you. We take a photo and then we upload it onto Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok, I believe. There's loads of them, isn't there? And we share it. And this is our way of communicating these days, isn't it? And Facebook has its advantages, but it also has its disadvantages. And that's another sermon for another day. Moses had no Facebook. How did we manage without social media? How did we manage without mobile phones, eh? But Moses had none of this, and there was nobody there to share his experience with. So I wonder how he reacted. Well, the Bible tells us. The Bible tells us that Moses stepped aside from what he was doing, and he went to look at this strange sight. Sometimes in life, don't you agree, that God literally has to do something extraordinary to get our attention? There are times when he's asked to say, stop, stop. I've got something to say to you. And the God who loves us and saved us uses these special moments to work his miracle of grace in our lives. Sometimes he stirs our soul. Sometimes he uses books and people or events in our lives to speak to us. And through a blending of unusual events, God says, listen to me. Just listen. Become aware of my holy ground that you're standing on. Respond to me and I will use you. The story that we've just read is one of, is one of my favourites. Uh, Moses is experiencing the most holiest of encounters with the Lord. And when God saw that Moses had turned to look, when he knew that he got Moses' full attention, he spoke to him. 
And isn't that a simple concept for each one of us to understand and take away from this place this morning? Moses stepped away from his responsibilities for a few moments and headed to the very thing that had captured his attention. And his life changed. It's very difficult in this day and age, isn't it, to stop, to walk away from the busyness. We live in an age of busyness, we live in an age of stress. God speaks and people are often too busy to listen as they have more important things on their minds. And sadly, it happens in churches too. I hope not here. The secret of the sanctity of the place that Moses stood was found in God and not in the place. It was the manifestation of the presence of God that made it a holy place. We're in early days of change here, but already we sense a stirring, a stirring of God's spirit, moving amongst his people. This place, we've already said, is hallowed ground. We praise God for all the work that has been done here over the years and for the saints that have walked before us. But we're in the here and now, a new season of ministry, post-COVID. <coughs> we're learning to live with COVID and we have an, obvi uh, an amazing opportunity, an open book, to see what this present age needs us to be in this place. Over the next few weeks, Ian and myself are going to be walking around the streets, walking around the town, doing some prayer walking, to find out what God wants us to do, to claim the ground for holy ground. If you want to come and do some prayer walking with us, come and, tell, come and talk to me afterwards. This place, as we've prayed earlier on, is the place where we worship a holy God, a place where extraordinary things happen, and I pray that they will. I pray that people's lives will be changed when they walk through this door because they will walk into the tangible presence of God in order for us to be part of that we need to step aside to walk away from the activities of the week and look at God so it's important that when we come to worship on a Sunday we come prepared we come expecting God to move the ground was made holy by the voice of God. And the voice called him by his name, Moses. Isn't it a wonderful revelation into the nature of God? Our, great is so God? our God is so great. He's so big and so mighty. And that's another chorus we sing, isn't it? And yet he calls us and knows us by our name. The ground was made holy by the call of God. And this is the thrust of the passage, really. God is calling Moses to be the human instrument for the deliverance of his people. Henry Blackaby is an international author and pastor, and he speaks about this, this incident as being an invitation from God to Moses to join him in what he is already doing. And I love that. God is already moving toward the freeing of his people from their bondage in Egypt and their deliverance into the land flowing with milk and honey. The burning bush was an experience, was an invitation for Moses to be part of what he is doing. Well, actually, it wasn't an invitation, was it? Because the Bible tells us that God said to him, so now go. So it was a command. Go, I am sending you to Pharaoh, to the people, to the Israelites, to take them out of Egypt. And that's what God says to us today. Come into my presence. Stay in my presence. Be blessed by being on holy ground. And then go. Go and do. Go and be. I, don't, I personally don't think Moses really understand what, understood what was happening to him on that day until he heard God's voice. And the response was, here I am. And that's all God wanted. He wanted Moses' attention and he wanted Moses' listening ear. And then God gave Moses a rather specific word of instruction, do not come any closer and take off your sandals. Moses understood the significance of that moment because he did as God asked. And there are some lessons here for us too. 
God took off his, uh, Moses took off his shoes in recognition of the fact that he was in the presence of God. In many parts of Asia, it's customary to take off your shoes before going into someone's house. It's an offence if you don't. There are many places of worship all over the world where the same thing is expected. It's a physical way of expressing the awareness that you are entering a holy place. The removal of the shoes is an act of putting aside the unclean things of the world. The shoes would have been dirty from trampling across the desert following the sheep. So if you're going to stand in God's presence, put aside every sign of defilement because you are approaching God with a personal sanctity. The removal of shoes is also a presentation of oneself as a servant. And as I said earlier, what struck me this week was when, when Moses took off his shoes, he was taking off something man-made and standing on something God-made. All of this was designed to put Moses in a position to be ready to obey the Lord. God revealed himself in this way, so Moses was ready to go to Egypt. Unfortunately, in the case of Moses, God encountered a bit of a reluctant servant. Instead of responding promptly in obedience, Moses responded with questions and excuses when he knew what God wanted him to do. And don't we all do that sometimes as well, because we're human. But you know, I believe that reluctance, I believe God told us that for a reason. It was a warning to us. I think Moses was so hesitant because he felt so unworthy for the task. But that's how God works, doesn't it? Isn't it? He uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Two notable Bible characters who found themselves standing on holy ground gives us a better example. When Isaiah found himself standing on holy ground, he said, Lord, here am I, send me. When Saul of Tarsus found himself kneeling on holy ground in the dusk of the Damascus road, he said, Lord, what will you have me do? And here we are today, standing on holy ground. God has brought us into his holy presence to get us ready to carry out a mission. To get us ready. To do a task. To be faithful to an assignment. So we move from the presence of God to doing the will of God. The burning bush was an amazing experience for Moses. The holy encounter transformed his life. And I believe God not only spoke to Moses, but the fire ignited something in his heart. A refiner's fire rekindled something that Moses had lost. It cleansed him. It made him whole. It prepared him for his future ministry. And what God did for Moses, God does today. What was available to Moses is available to each one of us today. We just have to step aside, fix our attention on him and stand in his presence and just say, I want to be holy, Lord, use me. There is a beautiful song in our songbook. Purify my heart, let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart, let me be as gold, pure gold. Refine as fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy. Set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy. Set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. And so as we, as we sing this song this morning, I would just like you to consider... Where are you in this story? What have you come for today? As we stand on holy ground, is God speaking to you? Do you want to be a holy person, ready to do God's will in a, in a world that is very much unholy? As we sing these songs, if this is your testimony, then come and stand at this place and say, Lord, I want to be holy. Take off your shoes where you're standing, where you're sitting there, and just stand up as a personal prayer to say, God, I'm here. I'm here for you. Use me as your servant this morning. Thanks, Gemma.
So Holy Spirit, we, your people, just come before you this morning. And we thank you for your Spirit's presence in this church and in our life. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would bless us this morning. That you would help us to be your representatives in this world that we live in. That you would help us to be your holy people. That you would give us strength and courage that when we leave this place, we can be your instruments as you were for Moses. We pray that you would help us to be humble servants, enabling us to be part of this big story in Stockton Salvation Army. Father, help us to do your will, to be your people. Amen. And we respond in closing by singing, um, I the Lord of Sea and Sky. As our closing song, if you've got your song books, it's 1002. With a chorus that says, Here am I, Lord. It is me, Lord. I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. Let's stand and sing this song together.
And a final benediction. We pray for the church we love, your church, Lord, and for all those who work in it. Holy Spirit, increase our faith, grow us in grace and knowledge, and fill us with all that we need to keep serving you. As we leave this place this morning, Lord, keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Guide us to do what is right in your sight. May your kingdom come and your will be done in Stockton. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray this prayer. Amen. Good morning and God bless each one of you.